Hey, how are you guys? It is Harrison Barron. In this video, I want to share with you guys how to book more podcast guests for your show and to weed out the people that are just not going to be a good fit for your show currently. This is information that I wish I knew when I first started my podcast, and currently it is in the top 3% in the world. And had I known all of this, not only would my show have grown even further and faster, but it would have made getting guests significantly easier for my show. So I want to share with you the information that I wish I knew back in the day. Now, if this is something that interests you, hit that subscribe button and that like button, and you're going to want to watch the next video because in that video I'm going to be covering an additional way that I never thought possible on how to go find good guests and get them on your show. But what I really wish I knew was a simple Google form. Now you might be thinking, well, that's so simple. I can go build that in 30 seconds. And that's where you're wrong. It's the information on that Google form that is going to make a massive difference on your podcast. And it took a long time to realize this because when I first started out, I was probably just like you. I'd go out, I'd either find somebody or people would be messaging me and I'd be asking them a bunch of questions, trying to vet them. And it turns out that that wasn't the worst method in the world. But knowing what I know now, there is a much, much, much easier method to go out and book podcast guests on your show that are is more than likely going to be the perfect guest for your show. So we're going to jump into my screen here and I want to share with you guys just a basic little form and I want to just put in your mind the capabilities and possibilities that this could possibly have for your podcast and booking guests. So right off the bat, the first thing you're going to want and you're going to want is and now that I'm looking at it, I did put email in there twice. You're going to want email, you're going to want their name and you're going to want their phone number. You're going to want to at least have a way that you can contact them, a way that you could send them information and a way that you could start to begin to build questions around it. Now, typically when I build out a podcast form and I left this kind of blank because you're going to have your own little disclaimer, what I would do is put in a little bit about this show. And the reason why I would do that is so that way when somebody actually goes to this form, they're going to get the information that they probably want to know. Now, when you're going out and sending this form out to people, they're probably going to ask what your show is, and that's fine. You're going to want to tell them about the show, and if they're interested, to fill out this form. Now, the reason why you have them fill out this form is purely because you want to start weeding out the people that aren't going to be a good fit for your show. If they're not willing to give you a name, a phone number, and an email address, they're probably not going to be a good fit. Now, depending on what niche you're in, this is where the gold is is where you could start asking questions. Now at my agency, I am an SEO expert. On my YouTube channel here, I am a podcast expert. So what are you, what subjects are you comfortable talking about? You don't wanna make it a multiple choice, although you may, if you have a certain niche that you're currently creating for, maybe you have, I don't know, niche one, and then so on and so forth, right? You could have niche two, as, as that already made niche two or option three, option four, option five, and so on. Now, that's really good if you're talking about finances, whether it's personal finance, business finance, loans, whatever you decide to talk about. If you're in healthcare, right, what kind of healthcare you're in, what kind of niches you want to talk about in healthcare. If you're in podcasting, how to make money, podcasting, how to start a podcast, or maybe it's YouTube. Hey, you know, I can talk about recording equipment. I can talk about channel analytics. Whatever it is, you could start to come in here and start to fill out what subjects are you comfortable with talking about? This is, first of all, the best information that I wish I had because it gives you a starting place for any podcast that you may book. Next is going to see you can put in your additional information. So this is uh, more questions that you're going to probably want to know about your guest. What kind of interests do they have? Do they have a following? How big is their following? What are their social media accounts? All of these questions are going to be very, very important because you're going to want to know this. You're going to want to know, hey, what is your social media accounts? What is your social media following? Is it a competitor trying to get on your show and they're trying to disguise themselves? The more questions you ask, you're going to start to weed out people that just want to kick rocks. And on top of that, the people that actually want to be on your show are going to take the time to fill this out. And I know it sounds so simple, like you could have just said a simple form on Google, but I want to show you another way that we could start to build more and more potential guests on here and build an email list that you can then say, hey, after you've recorded, this is where we can start to send them. But you could, the questions I want to start to think about asking a potential guest, depending on if they're from my show or somebody else's, is what subjects are you comfortable with talking about, right? Do you already have a following? Do you already have a social media account? Do you have a social media following? What are you looking to promote 
is a very good question because everyone is looking to promote something. Now, it may be they're just looking to promote themselves, which is fine, or they're looking to promote them their business. What offers do they plan on mentioning during the podcast? Now, a hungry or very thirsty salesperson is going to say, well, I want to talk about my SEO course and I want to mention it, right? Well, I do have an SEO course. When I was a guest on many podcasts over about 150 or so, I never mentioned it, or at least it was the last thing that I ever said. And it was only after the host specifically asked me, hey, by the way, what do you sell or is there anything that you want to promote? Yeah, I talk about podcasting and I talk about SEO and this is what I want to mention. By the way, you can go find me at harrisonbaron.com. That was typically how I signed off. But when they are very eager to put it on there, it does allow for that person to kind of show their true colors or true intentions of saying, I'm really only being on the show, not to add value to your audience, but because I want it for selfish reasons. And that's typically somebody that you may want to avoid on your show. But you could keep asking questions over and over and over again. One of my favorite questions is actually, who is my favorite superhero? And what I do very interestingly enough is when I go through and I ask who my favorite superhero is, I typically hide it in the about the show area where I'll mention my favorite superhero is Iron Man. I want somebody to have spent a little bit of time, at least the bare necessity amount of time reading over the form that they're filling out to be on my show to have read it and understand it. So when I ask them later on down the down the form, who's my favorite superhero? I know that they actually took time out of their day to read everything on here. And I'm not looking for the most detail oriented person. I'm looking for somebody who just took the time. I'm not putting a ton of information up there. They're getting on my show. They're getting free publicity coming on my show. Why wouldn't I want to ask them a question to see if they're actually paying attention to it? And that's going to be one of the key differentiators. Now, the nice part is, is once you get all of these responses, it's going to format it into a nice little Excel sheet. You can then look at it and determine you have their first name, you have their last name, you have their email address, and you have their phone number. Do you want to book an intro 15 minute call? And I highly, highly recommend doing this. Now you've weeded them out with a nice form. You're setting them a quick 15 minute introduction call that they could pick on your calendar, something like Grammarly or HubSpot, not Grammarly, something like HubSpot or Calendly. You can go on there, create a free account, and you could just book 15 minutes. Hey, book 15 minutes on my calendar. Boom, they click it and they book that first 15 minute call. That call is just simply an introduction. Hey, I just saw that you want to talk about this. Tell me a little bit about your experience in this. What else do you want to talk about? Is there anything that you are trying to promote? You can go through this list, see if it's consistent, but also see if they have, if they're actually interesting to talk about. Somebody could be extremely interesting in, on paper, but when it comes time to talk to them, they might be kind of boring. And I know that that's a bummer to talk about and it's not always the most fun, but that's reality. People can look really, really good on paper, but until you sit down and get to the brass tacks, that simple conversation of knowing whether or not they are who they say they are and they are as good as they say they are. And if they're comfortable being on camera and being recorded, that is when you're going to start making the most impact for your audience, who is the, without a doubt, most important people out there. But secondly, you can have a really good conversation with your guest. Now, depending on how long your show is, will also vary and determine how long this form is. My shows were between an hour and a half to about three hours long for the most part. And because of that, I would ask a good handful of questions what topics would you like to talk about? After we cover the initial topics, what additional topics are you comfortable with? What topics are you uncomfortable or would prefer I do not ask you about? They're going to share some very personal information in there. And depending on what they fill out, we'll determine whether or not, one, I'm even going to bring it up in conversation in my pre-interview. But two, hey, is there something that I need to know about before I publish a podcast with you that may come back and bite me in the butt? They're going to reveal an area that might be very sensitive and me as the podcast host or you as the podcast host now has to go out and make sure that whatever it is they did right maybe they messed up a little bit in life that's okay are they comfortable talking about it did they do something really really bad and you didn't do your homework on them and they want to just mention hey up front i did xyz thing i'm really not proud of it i hope that's not stopping me from getting on your show that is a real genuine concern for some people. So if this is something that you might think, oh my God, I don't want somebody to come on my show that has a record, has done something horrible, whatever it may be, whatever your defining characteristics of somebody who shouldn't be on your show is, you are probably going to want to ask that on this form. And if they're not willing to take the time out to fill it out, you could say in your introductory call, 
hey, by the way, I saw you didn't fill anything out. Is there anything, if I Google your name, is something going to come up that I'm not going to be happy about putting it on my show? Remember, it is your show. You want to make sure that whatever that guest did, you're comfortable with having. They are a direct reflection of you as the host, and that is super, super important. Now, the second thing is that I want to show you is a way to do this in an area that I think is a little bit better personally, and just because you can track data. So I'm going to share my screen really quickly, and I'm going to just jump into HubSpot. Now, in HubSpot, you could build the exact same form. It is literally as simple as clicking and dragging, right? We have the phone number, and in here, you're going to be able to create new, and you're going to be able to add that information directly to it, right? Paragraph, images. Maybe you want to grab the header ahead of time. You can do that inside of here. You can go in, you can add a question, and you could just say, uh, please upload a headshot of you. And you could ask for the bio. Feel free to get down and, and dirty into the nitty gritty details. 15 to 20 questions is more than enough. Even 30 questions, depending on how long your show is and how big your audience is, that may very well warrant it. And then you can come in here, you can add an upload file, linear scale, whatever it is that you decide. In this case, it would be an upload file where they're going to actually be able to go and upload it. Same thing with HubSpot. The nice part about HubSpot is it'll actually give you the ability to go through and see all of that information. Now, I'm not going to click directly into my contacts area, but what I could do is I can create a contact or I can create an email directly to all of my already existing contacts. Simply by going through this, I could just grab this and I'm obviously doing this in real time. It's not very hard and you can do this 100% for free. There was a link down below if you do decide to become a HubSpot, uh, if you do decide to use the HubSpot software, but you can go through and you could send this all out to anybody. You can send it to either people that have came in from a certain form. Hey, by the way, I have a guest spot opening up. Would anybody like to come in here? I can send it out to everyone. I can send it out to uh, people that came in from Zapier, whether it's a third-party platform, spam forms, whatever it may be. I can go through and show people's emails. This is something super important. And by doing that over and over and over again, not only am I going to add people that were already interested in the show, but maybe somebody has, hey, you know what? I have time on a Thursday night. I've already been a show. I've already been a, a guest on your show. I want to come back on. And you could send out that email. Hey, I have one slot open. First person, first come, first serve. Go book it now. There's so much opportunity. And people that didn't get on your show, you can still send them an email saying, hey, by the way, we have a new show coming out. It features so-and-so. And they're going to be able to see it and enjoy it if they actually had an interest of being on your show. But leverage Google Forms, leverage HubSpot, collect all of that data, leverage that data as you see fit, but it is going to make a massive, massive difference in the speed in which you grow and the quality of your audience and the quality of your guests, because your audience is going to like you more for doing your homework due diligence, and your guests are going to like you more for the same thing, for doing your homework, your due diligence, and making sure that you're getting the best guest possible and knowing that if they're on your show, you mean business. So I hope this video helps. If you guys want to jump on my newsletter to stay up to date about the most important podcast trends and how to grow your podcast, check that out down below. And I do have an incredible video coming up on the best pair of headphones from Audio Technica from the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. You're going to want to make sure you subscribe and check that video out. It's coming out in about a week or so from the date that this video drops. I'll see you guys later. I appreciate everything. Till then.